All right, guys, my name is Chris Gutierrez with Code 3 Motors, longtime paramedic and power stroke mechanic. I have a 2004 E450 Super Duty with 155,000 miles. The coach builder is MedTech, and uh, we're going to do a walk around tour, go through all the exterior compartments, and then we're going to jump in the patient compartment. Uh, go through everything back there. We'll get in the cab. We'll go over every switch and knob in the front. Uh, we'll look at the undercarriage and the tires, and then we will go for a test drive. So uh, all in all, there's probably going to be about 30 to 40 minutes worth of video here, but it will be well worth it. You're going to get to see everything you wanted to see and some stuff that you probably forgot about or didn't care about. So. Uh, here it is. You can see the paint is in really nice shape. You cannot read what it used to say. Uh, it's shiny and it runs great. It was just serviced at Ford. It had about $2,700 worth of EGR work, so it's in tip-top shape right now. Uh, they replaced some other stuff, some uh, electronic components that relate to the EGR, uh, some sensors and stuff. And, uh... Yeah, so, and that stuff is under warranty at any Ford dealer for, I think it's a year. They don't give you a whole lot of time, but uh, this thing's going to be good to go for quite a while. So let's go ahead and start going through all the exterior compartments. Compartment one is our oxygen compartment. Uh, and this was in use by a fire department. You can see there's two SCBA tank holders on the wall. So if you're a fire department, you can utilize those or you can get rid of them. Um, you'll notice the tank space is really big. Uh, it looks like it was originally intended for an H tank, which is the biggest tank that you can put in there. Uh, or an M tank can certainly fit in there as well, uh, no problem. That's actually what was in here. They forgot to take the, the, the tank out, so we took it out. So it, it had an M in it, but it's big enough for an H. Uh, this compartment here, big storage compartment, has a vanner inverter. You can see the suction motors up there. It's a little bit of sh shelf space, not much. And then a big space down below. That blue bag is snow chains in the event that you should need snow chains. We don't need them, so it's going with the vehicle and there's that and all these uh, exterior uh, compartment lights will come on when the motor's running I just don't have it running right now so you can hear me <coughs> and then this compartment here really nice big area three big adjustable shelves you can adjust those any way you want and there's access from inside from the action wall the plexiglass doors uh, you can reach through and access that stuff from the other side. We'll, we'll get in the back in a minute. Let's just finish knocking these out. This is our backboard compartment. Moving that up all the way. And that's a good size. You could put uh, four or five backboards in there, plus uh, probably a scoop stretcher and uh, a flat. Uh, it's, it's not deep enough to put like a Stokes basket, but it's pretty big for quite a few backboards. Here's a small compartment here that's typically used for snow chains, but uh, they're in the other compartment. Over here is our uh, compartment that would uh, have typically all of your equipment going in for your rescue, your jump bag, portable oxygen, monitor, portable suction, all that stuff there. There is a charging station that I don't recognize to tell you the truth. Um, it might be for a portable suction um, or a monitor. It might be a life pack charging station because I can see there's two pins up there and that is not the same for like a score portable suction. So I'm not sure what that charging station is for, but it's there. Uh, and then down here, there's two batteries and a slide out drawer that are brand new. We put those in uh, up last week. So there's that. So let me fire this thing up. We'll get in the back and start going all over all the switches and all of that stuff. So let me, uh... oh yeah, and there's a shoreline connection 
right here that's a, a 125. It's got that one sideways uh, prong. All right, let's get this thing fired up. Okay, uh, and then we've got module disconnect. All right, we got juice to the back. Let's go take a look. Okay, so my uh, screen was flashing that my card was full. So I'm gonna do this over again and uh, I'll edit it to make it right. Anyway, I was showing you the heat in cool. So if we hit that switch, our speed selector is here. It's high, medium, low, off, and probably here. That coming out of there. And, and this is your thermostat, so if you want cold or heat or whatever, you just adjust that to dial in the temperature that you desire. And there, there's that. Uh, our suction, see that light come on? If you look at our gauge right here, I will put my finger over. And that's set just how I like it is a medic. But if you want to increase or decrease, you just dial that in to get the proper amount of suction that you want. To power our inverter, we flip that switch. That makes all of our outlets hot. There's one over there. Um, there's one up there to charge your monitor, whatever you got going on over there. Uh, that's our uh, flood lamp. This is something that MedTech has done since they came out. It's it's like a way to let the driver know, hey, you know, the patient just crashed. You know, step it up, code three. You can you can buzz them from 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 back there. I prefer just to stick my head through and be like, hey, uh, code three, dude. We uh, we got a code. Then our exhaust fan, if there's odors back here that you don't want to be back here, you got uh, low, medium, and high to choose from. And then you gotta make sure this is open. And you can suck out those odors. So, you know, if you kind of like the stink that's back here, you can just leave it on low so you can enjoy that smell longer. But if you really want to get it out quickly, I would recommend using the high because why why else I don't even know why you'd have <laughs> medium and low but it's there if you want it you got options all right so I think we're ready to go up in the cab and uh, there's also a flashlight charging station for a stream light light box oh yeah there's one of the outlets for the uh, firecom intercom system and then there's one obviously on each side of the cap let's get out and go look in the front oh yeah it's set up for a uh, you can put a striker MX Pro power pro or a striker easy pro or a Ferno Pro Flex gurney will fit in here it has the lockdown system for any of those um, let me, you know what, while we're back here, let's take a look. Yeah. Look at the tires also. So. See, there's deep tread. Lots of tread on the tires. Pop the hood and look at the motor real quick.
and it sounds fantastic. And did the gas bottle, which uh, you want to call it the overflow radiator fluid, looks fantastic. That's the way you want it to look. You never want to see it dark. You never want to see any black fluid uh, fishing around in there. That means there's oil in there. And if there's oil in your degas bottle, you either got a blown head gasket, which is pretty rare, or you got a high pressure oil pump failure. And that's a big job and it sucks. All right. So let me give you a, let me, let me give it. <clears throat> so here's our cab. <clears throat> you'll see the floor's in great shape. There's no heel hole. Usually <clears throat> I'll see a hole there from some of these boots. Here's the door panel. The pocket is on there. I see that broken off all the time. There is a diamond plate uh, step to get in the rig. <clears throat> you'll notice that the seat upholstery is in excellent condition for both. The armrests are not broken, which is great because that's one of my favorite features. Uh, the headliner, you'll see, is in fantastic shape. And then, um, let's get in and take a look. You'll see, uh, our odometer, 155002.5. You'll see there's no check engine light, no service engine soon light. All the needles are where they're supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> We'll do our windshield wipers. You can see the fluid come out of there. And we've got fast and well, super fast and then a bunch of settings in the middle and slow. Uh, there's that. Um, let's see, we got our regular Ford horn. Our climate control is right here. So let's start with max AC. Oof. That feels good. Okay, you can probably hear that coming out. So our speed selector is right here. So it's on high. There's two medium settings and low. And then I'll go through the, the cycles here. So we got max AC, normal AC. You can hear the actuator door move as I as I go through these. There's off. There's floor. Mix. And defroster. And it's blowing out of each of the appropriate places when I do that. Uh, and then if you want heat, you just, you know, put the, the thermostat to cold or heat or somewhere in the middle, whatever you want. Our radio works. It also has a CD player if you happen to still have CDs. Uh, this is odd because this is usually the first thing gone. I, it's, the cigarette plug is still present. This is the second thing that's usually gone. It's the cover that covers the hole for another, <clears throat> you know, a phone charger, cigarette plug right there. Um, we have <clears throat> power windows that are really fast, up and down fast. Usually they're fast going down, and these are fast going up and down. And then if you continue to look at that mirror over there, I will go ahead and move it for you. You can see that going side to side, up and down. And then you look over into this mirror here. You can see that one going side to side. Oops, you know, up and down. That works great. And then uh, <coughs> we have power door locks. Um, and that controls, <coughs> That locks all the exterior compartments as well as the rear entry doors also. So, just want to be aware of. Okay, I put, I set our uh, rear flood lights are on. The emergency lights are pretty easy. There's just two, two switch to put forward. You can leave them like that all the time. And then you just throw the master. And now we're rolling code right now. So let's get out. Oh yeah, look, there's a uh, um, spotlight here. So if you are looking for an address or someone is uh, walking up to your rig when it's dark and you're like what's that you can light them up and see and then our uh, this is our uh, Ford power manager 
um, right there. So if I were to put the uh, emergency brake on, so if you look down there, if I put the emergency brake on, it'll kick into higher RPMs in a second. And what's doing that is the Ford load manager. But let's not have that right now, otherwise we'll have to talk louder over the motor. So let's get out and take a look here. So you'll see we've got uh, <clears throat> the front light bar, it has red rotors on the outside. There's some clear corner sweepers in the lower bank of the bar. And then in the center of the bar, there's clear rotors. <clears throat> now, if you don't like the rotor light bar, if you want something a little more modern, <clears throat> we can certainly change this light bar out and put like a, a Echo 56 inch light bar would look good up there. Uh, but that would be about $1,200. If you wanted to do that, we can totally do that. So, so that's what you got going for the light bar. There's three 9x7s around the light bar that are up there for more visibility. You got the front fender flasher, and then down in on either side of the grill. The passenger side flashes, the driver's side is just a steady burning red. That's a California thing. There always has to be a steady burning red facing forward. On this side, you got 9x7 uh, red, and then our floodlights are on. Back here, see, there's four 9x7 reds, an amber in the middle, and then we got our, our load lights on in the back. And then on the side here, we've got our 9x7 reds with our floodlights on. Oh, yeah, I should tell you <clears throat> these four holes right here, because the box is aluminum, nothing magnetic will stick to it. So you can put a metal plate on the box. So if you want to put magnetic numbers like, you know, rescue 12 or whatever, you can do that. It's on either side has that in addition to the rear here. So that way, if you're uh, taking a unit out of service for whatever, and you still want to have rescue 12 out on the road, you can switch your magnetic numbers between, between rigs. So, um, there's that. Is there anything else out here worth showing you? I don't think so. All right, there's that. Um, I think we covered everything. Let's go for a test drive. Um, let me get a couple items that I need, and then, um, and then I'll be right back with you. We'll go for a test drive. Okay, I almost forgot to show you the siren, which is right there. Um, let's turn it off. Let's turn it on. So we have... That's our air horn. That's uh, the whale. And then if we... Oh, where is it? There's our whale. Yelp. And phaser. So there's that, uh, and I think if we engage our so uh, siren horn, let's see here. So that's for the air horn. Let's see if I go to. All right. So if we hit the siren, uh, yelp, phaser. Double click is off. So there's a, there's your siren, and then there's a PA testing testing. So that works great. Okay, sorry I forgot to uh, cover that when we were doing all of our interior stuff. That's how that works.